Hi everyone, this is Deb Tim, a Canadian girl, and today we are going to look at freshwater red algae. Uh, this is episode number seven in my algae series, so please stay tuned. The red algae we will discuss today is found in freshwater aquariums and is one of the most stubborn and most frustrating to aquarists. This algae appears furry and thread-like, attaching itself to various surfaces throughout your aquarium, from filter intake tubes to plant leaves to core and rocks, even your substrate. Red algae takes on different forms. Some will show up looking similar to beard algae. Shorter strands will resemble brush algae. And finally, it can even show up in round spotty patches. In nature, this algae is found in fast-moving streams, attaching itself tenaciously to areas where there is constant water movement. These areas are also low in nutrients. As you can imagine, to sustain itself in this type of environment, it would be necessary to have a tight grip, making its removal very difficult. In an aquarium setting, in removing this algae from plants, it's likely the plant will sustain some damage being torn in an effort to rid the plants of this stubborn algae. On the bright side, some aquarists do find this algae an enhancement as it attaches to driftwood and moves with the current of the water. The most likely cause of this algae inhabiting an aquarium is through purchasing infected plants. Contaminated water containing spores of this algae that are likely to be in the water the fish are bagged in or the plants are bagged in. Um, or even it can enter your aquarium through the intestinal tract of the fish themselves. A good light source is necessary for healthy plant growth. Intensifying the light, the plant growth will excel. Well, this goes the same for algae as light is something it needs to flourish. Actively growing plants will absorb the nutrients in the water, eventually starving out the algae of what it needs to survive, eventually causing it to die off. Planted plants get their nutrients from the soil, but algae gains its nutrients from the water column. If the nutrients are reduced in the water, the algae will suffer. In ridding your aquarium of red algae, you can begin by removing the affected leaves of plants. Some plants, like Anubias being slow growing, may have spores on every leaf. In this case, removing the leaves is impractical. As drastic as it sounds, preparing a bleach bath for two to three minutes of one part bleach to 19 parts water will effectively kill off this algae. Using a generic brand without any scent additives is recommended. The finer leaf plants can only withstand a two minute dip but heavier, thicker plants can go the full three minutes. Make sure the plants are completely covered. Once the time is up, immediately rinse the plants in fresh water. Having a bucket ready is the best practice. Afterwards, take your fingers and gently rub the algae off. It will be much easier to remove once it's dead. The plants can be returned to their home, keeping in mind some plants will lose some of their leaves from this process, but they will quickly recover and begin to flourish. While you have your aquarium plants removed, it's important to clean the entire tank, soaking anything removable in bleach solution, including substrate, to completely kill off any spores remaining. As a general rule, if the bleach scent is gone, it's safe to return items to the aquarium. For porous items such as clay pots, it's recommended to allow them to totally air dry. 
Copper is another effective way to kill red algae, but should only be used as a last resort. The benefit is that you do not have to dismantle your entire aquarium. However, it can be harmful to some of your plants. In using copper, you must remove your fish as most cannot withstand this treatment. It's also recommended to remove snails and other invertebrates. Live bears must be removed, although there are some that tolerate um, copper, such as cichlids, that can be safely left if you choose. In protecting your aquarium from an algae infestation, you must always dip your new plants in a bleach solution, killing off any possible contaminants. Never allow water from any other source than your own to enter the water in your aquarium. Quarantine your fish for at least a week. Two weeks is even better. This will allow their intestinal tract to be cleaned out prior to entering your tank. Reduce the amount of iron-bearing fertilizers used, keeping in mind that the algae absorbs its nutrients from the water column. If the levels are kept low, the algae will suffer. Heavily planting your tank will also outcompete algae. It's also very important that you use healthy plants. Weaker or sickly plants will not be able to absorb the nutrients as a healthy plant will. Make sure you have a reputable source for your plants. And if you are buying your plants from a local fish store or a big box store, find out when their plant shipment arrives and get the freshest plants you can. Another recommendation is to have a Siamese algae eater or other algae eaters as part of your cleaning crew before you have an algae problem. Most often they will be able to keep any algae under control before it becomes a problem. It's best to have them in the aquarium from the onset rather than add them as a fixer later. They may be good at their job, but some jobs are just too big to handle. Now I'm excited to highlight another awesome channel, Jake's Tanks. This is a very new channel with enormous potential. Jake, the man behind the channel, has a definite case of MTS, as we affectionately call the affliction of multi-tank syndrome. Jake has it in spades. Jake began with planted freshwater tanks and nanofish tanks but is expanding. He just finished building an incredible fish room. I insist you go over and check it out. You are guaranteed to be impressed. Other elements to Jake's channels will be DIYs and how-to videos. He'll share his breathing um, programs, aquascaping he does, and so much more. I'm very excited about Jake's channel because it's going to make a huge splash in this community. The passion Jake has for this hobby is seen in each of his videos, so please go right over now. I promise you, you do not want to miss out on subscribing and being a supporter of a channel so new with such amazing potential. Tell Jake a Canadian girl sent you. So until next time, this is Deb Tim signing out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.